so much. Thank you so much, Chairman Jacobs, for that very generous introduction and for your leadership to the executive board. Is the Democratic Party in the House right now? Yes. Are you ready for a big blue wave in November? Yes. Are you ready to help us keep control of the United States House of Representatives? Yes. It's such an honor and a blessing to be with you here today. So thankful for all of your efforts, for your work, for your vision, uh, for what you do to make life better for everyday New Yorkers all across the great Empire State. Certainly thankful for the leadership of our governor. She's doing an incredibly good job after inheriting a job during very difficult circumstances. And she's moving this state forward in a phenomenal way. I'm thankful for my friend, my former colleague in the assembly, uh, our controller, Tom DiNapoli, who, who, who's making sure that our money isn't funny and our change isn't strange. <laughs> and, and I'm certainly thankful for uh, my good friend, our dynamic Attorney General, Tish James. Woo! She's doing an amazing job. I say about Tish James, she is Brooklyn's dream and Donald Trump's nightmare. Yeah. Uh, so we're thankful for uh, Tish James, all of my colleagues in government, I know Adriano Espaillat is here. He's doing a tremendous job representing parts of the Bronx and upper Manhattan to those uh, other elected officials in government. These are challenging times that we confront. A once in a century COVID-19 pandemic, public health crisis, related economic crisis, climate, crisis, a democracy crisis, a racial justice crisis, challenging times. But as I look out at this assembly, I'm confident that led by the Democratic Party, we'll continue to fight through the turbulence and come out stronger on the other side. Because the Democratic Party, we are the most authentic representatives of the people of New York and the American people. We look like the American people. We've lived the experiences of the American people. We can feel the pain of the American people, and that's why we work so authentically to solve their challenges. We believe, as Democrats, that our diversity is a strength. It is not a weakness. Uh, we are a gorgeous mosaic of people here in New York State from all over the world. We are, we are a nation and a state of immigrants, some voluntary, others involuntary, but as John Lewis would often remind us, we may have come over on different ships, but we're all in the same boat now. Uh, we are white, we are black, we are Latino, we are Asian, we are Native American, we're Christian, we're Jewish, we're Muslim, we're Hindu, we're believers, we're non-believers, we're gay, we are straight, we are young, we are older, we are women, we are men, we are citizens, we are dreamers. Out of many, we are one. That's what makes us a great state and a great nation. And no matter what xenophobia is coming from the other side of the aisle, we're not going to let anyone take that away from us. Not now, not ever. That's the Democratic Party here in New York State and across the nation. We fight so hard because the stakes are so hard. There's a, there's a big difference, a big difference between what we're about and what the other side is about. We're trying to move the state and move the country forward. They want to turn back the clock. We're fighting to keep and bring people together they are trying to tear us apart. We fight for the people, they fight for the privileged few. We believe in the public interest, they're all about the special interest. We fight for the least, the lost, and the left behind. They fight for the wealthy, the well-off, and the well-connected. We believe in Social Security and Medicare, they want to take that away. We believe that health care is a right. They believe that it's a privilege. Uh, we believe that we have to address the climate change with the fierce urgency of now. They don't believe in science and continue to yeah. bury their heads in the sand. We believe in unions and the right to collectively bargain. They want to destroy your freedom to negotiate, but here's a news flash straight out of Brooklyn. Democrats will stand with organized labor today. Democrats will stand with organized labor tomorrow. Democrats will stand with organized labor forever. Because we believe in people power over corporate power. We believe in a country 
and in a state that provides for the poor, works for working families, makes sense for the middle class, stands up for senior citizens. We believe in a state and a country that innovates in the inner city, strengthens suburban communities, and revitalizes rural America. We believe in a country and a state with, with liberty and justice for all, equal protection under the law, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And as it relates to our For the People agenda, led by President Biden and Governor Hochul, Democrats in the House and the Senate, we're going to continue to fight to create millions of good paying jobs, provide high quality health care to every single New Yorker and every single American, make sure we educate our children so that they can pursue the American dream, protect public safety, create and preserve affordable housing, and we're going to make sure that we defend our democracy and end the era of voter suppression in the United States of America once and for all. That's what the Democratic Party is all about. That's what we will continue to fight for. And I know some say that the odds are against us and that we're, we're not going to meet with success in November, but that's in our hands. That's in our ability to control. Through our hard work and our effort, our heart and our soul. Because the stakes are so high. That's why we continue to fight hard in Washington, in the House, and with our great United States Senators, Lita Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand in the Senate. That's why we continue to stand with our president and our vice president. I'll end with this observation. It's my hope that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle in the aftermath of that January 6th insurrection, that they would, they would run toward democracy, but instead they've run away from democracy. Doubled and tripled down on Trumpism, moved away from democracy, moved toward autocracy. Notwithstanding what happened that fateful day. I, I was there on the floor. I remember it like it was yesterday. We were in the middle of debating the so-called objections to the state of Arizona. The sergeant at arms interrupted the debate. And he said that the mob has breached the Capitol. They're on the second floor. They're a few steps outside of the chamber. Be prepared to hit the ground and secure the gas masks that are underneath your seats. I'd been in the house at that point for a little over eight years, had no idea there were gas masks <laughs> underneath each and every, that's when I knew it was serious. Uh, in fact, I saw that the speaker, for the first time ever, violently removed from the rostrum. And I was seated in the leadership section, as Jay said, I'm chair uh, of the House Democratic Caucus, the privilege uh, of serving in leadership, that makes me the number five in the house. I was seated in the leadership section, uh, right next to me was Steny Hoyer and Jim Clyburn. Catherine Clark, the assistant speaker, she wasn't there because she was quarantining. I, I see the speaker, she's violently removed from the rostrum after the announcement was made. And then the security team comes to get Steny Hoyer, the majority leader, removes him from the floor. And then they come get Jim Clyburn. I'll never forget it. He was right next to me. They say, sir, you have to leave now. And I got to be honest, Christine, I, I, I saw Nancy Pelosi, she, she's number one, the speaker, she was removed. I saw, I saw Steny Hoyer, he's the majority leader, he was removed. I, I saw Jim Clyburn, the whip, number three, he was removed. Catherine Clark wasn't there, I'm number five. I was waiting for somebody to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> but Jay, they never came. <laughs> But that's all right. I'm a man of the people. I'm from Brooklyn, y'all. Uh, and so we were there for what seemed like an eternity, and, and, and finally we were removed <coughs> to a safe location. We stayed there for five hours, Liz Cheney and I being the most senior members at the time in that room, coming together. The most important thing that happened was not that the mob ran us off the House floor, not that we had to be evacuated, 
not that we were in a safe location for several hours. The most important thing that happened that day, this is what we're all about, is that we came back to the Capitol, we completed our work, we certified the election, and we made sure that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris would become the President and the Vice President of the United States of America. That's what we're all about. Let's go out there and make sure that Democrats maintain control in the People's House. We put a Democrat in the State House. We keep a Democrat in the White House. And the Republicans stay in the Dog House. God bless you. God bless the New York State Democratic Party. And God bless the United States of America.